appetite to the people in the fall. And we shall win. leadership can come a more vital life for our people. With this in mind, I announce my candidacy for President of these United States. Okay. I'm scared. I don't know if I'm going to be a very good campaigner. You'll be fine, Jackie. Just keep smiling and uh, look positive. <laughs> All right, everybody, huddle up. Bobby, as my campaign manager, you're our quarterback. You get called play. Why does Bobby always get to be quarterback? Cause I'm older, Teddy, now shut up! Yes, Bobby. <laughs> Huddle up there, Rod, uh, Jackie. All right, here's the play for the Democratic primary campaign. Eunice, you'll go to New Hampshire, break left, and keep going until you hit West Virginia, then butt hook towards Illinois. Woo! Pat, you run to Ohio, fake left, and go right to Delaware. I'll hit you there with tons of money and bumper sticker supply. Woo! Peter and Gene, you go direct to Hollywood, set up a blocking line of movie stars. Woo. Teddy, you roam the open territory of Wyoming and the other western states as a decoy, Teddy. Woo. <laughs> Jack, Jackie, and I will go direct to Wisconsin. We'll take Humphrey out with an end around there. Woo. We'll all meet in Los Angeles for the convention. Ready? Ready? Nine K! Six day! Campaign! Hey! Good play, Bobby! Jackie, pack only three dresses, a travel iron, and a sewing kit, and a hat for church. You may also bring along a string of pearls. I don't think I'm cut out for this. You have no time for thinking, Jackie. We're off to Wisconsin. Hey, look, y'all, here comes the train. The new frontier, a vision for the future. Stop communism, go to the moon. Oh, Mrs. Kimmy, we thought we'd gotten cute. We need a place for you kissing our frost pig. Jack! Aw, uh, kiss the pig, Jackie. But it's filthy! Jack, tell her not to insult their pig. It could be bad for the farm boat. Kiss the pig, Jackie, and smile. <laughs> Miss Kennedy, we'd like you to try some of our famous Wisconsin head cheese. It's made from the crushed brains and unwanted internal organs of a cow, including the intestines and unwashed colon. Jack! Uh, eat the head cheese, Jack. <laughs> Miss Kennedy, we'd be full proud to have your picture taken cleaning the steam up from the up from our freshly born cow. Oh, I'm gonna go for them kids. I'm not going to go for them. Thank you. How many sauce, Jack? I uh, get some sleep, Jack, and we start all over again tomorrow. She is a trooper, Jack, a real team player. What's our next move, Bobby? Well, I think we've got Humphrey on the defensive here in Wisconsin. Our next battle should be in West Virginia. Jackie, wake up! We're off to West Virginia. Oh, we had just went to sleep. We've got Wisconsin locked up. We're off to West Virginia. Hey, look, y'all! Here comes another train. <laughs> the new frontier. A vision for the future. Stop communism. Go to the moon. Why should we vote for you? You haven't worked a day in your life and your cat. Let me just say this about that. <laughs> Nobody ever asked me if I was a Catholic when I joined the United States Navy and nearly lost my life during World War II. Furthermore, I am sick and tired of being told that I cannot be president for my religious beliefs. How do you feel about that subject, Mrs. Kennedy? I think it's unjust for people to be against Jack just because he's Catholic. He's such a poor Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> now, if it were Bobby, I would understand it. What's your impression of Mr. Kennedy? I think that wife of his sure is beautiful. Yeah, but do you think he'd make a good president? Well, I think it sure is refreshing to look at that Jackie Kennedy especially after eight years looking at Mamie Eisenhower. <laughs> oh, way that woman is beautiful! I'm voting for Kennedy. I'm gonna vote for him, too. <laughs> well, 
month, we've won West Virginia. That effectively gives you the nomination. It also puts the Catholic issue to rest. Uh, Jackie, you have done a tremendous job. Yes, Jackie, well done. Jack, I'm exhausted. You go out ahead to Los Angeles and get your nomination. I'll stay here in Hyannis. All right, uh, Caroline will be happier if you're here. I'm sure you'll be happier too. Does that remark refer to something specific? So for one second, think I'm one of those naive little political wives. I know you'll be getting a lot more than the nomination in Los Angeles. Jackie, I think you're just tired. The uh, primary campaign has been tough on us all. Just remember, I'll be watching on television with your daughter. Jack, your private life is none of my business. But when it has bearing on this campaign, it becomes my business. We're going to need Jackie to beat Nixon. I'm also worried about the press. Uh, relax, Bobby. The public is not interested in the sex lives of politicians. Now, get a move on. We've got a plane to catch. <laughs> Bobby, I want you to go to the hotel. I'm going to a party at Greg Sinatra's house in Palm Springs. Jack, try and keep your pants on until you've got the nomination. Please. Say a rosary for me, Bobby. I am told there is someone very special waiting for me over at Sinatra's. Liberace? <laughs> right, Bobby, Liberace. Well, I'll go with you. Up no dice, Bobby. Well, Jack, uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, why can't uh, I? Uh, oh. Hello, Dean. Hello, Joey. Hello, Peter. Hello, Sammy. Hello. Where's Frank? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Hey Jack, you're my kind of guy. Like oh, way. real go getter, a man on the fly. Hey Jack, you really swing, I dig your style. You presidential thing. Uh -huh. Hey Jack, oh, you can have it all. Grab a chick, have a <laughs> ball. Hey Jack, hey Kennedy. Hey Jack, oh, Jack Kennedy. Hey there, Rob. Uh, 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 Frank, uh, oh, no thanks on the girl, I've got someone else in mind. Hello, Jack. Hello, Marilyn, you, uh, look stunning. Oh, you like my dress? Oh, Frankie, um, I saw Shirley MacLaine pouring vodka in the swimming pool again. You'd better stop her, we wouldn't want her to mess up your pool of flirtation system, would we? <laughs> I'm hip, I'm out of here, don't need a picture to make it clear. I'm gone, I'm history, I know you want some privacy. <laughs> might take a boat, might take a plane, <laughs> either way it's a be the same. I'm gone, <laughs> I gotta move, I gotta travel, gotta agitate the gravel. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> ah. Oh, Frankie, what a cut-up. I uh, can't stay long, Marilyn. Oh, politics, politics, politics. Get up, Jack. You really should loosen up a bit. When you become a big, powerful president, there'll be plenty of time for politics. But tonight, deal with me. The uh, convention is uh, this week, and Bobby had a fit about me coming over here. Oh, well then, let's make it official business. Uh, how's that? Oh, I know. I have a check for $25,000 to go towards your campaign. Marilyn, that is very generous. Oh, well now all you have to do is find it. <laughs> <laughs>
You must be very proud. That's true, but I'm miserable. I can't stand the thought of any more campaigns. Jack and Bobby think I should be as visible as Pat Nixon. Oh, they should set higher goals for you. That woman looks as though she was raised by crows. And at least I'm pregnant. I have an excuse to miss all those chicken dinners. <laughs> I've heard that Kennedy cuisine consists of creamed everything over potatoes. It's true. They eat like refugees. Oh, Why are you and Jack holding up over the train? Oh. I think he's seeing a movie star. So you may name it? <laughs> Isn't he? <laughs> true, man. Oh, one can always hope, Jackie. One can always hope. It's Marilyn Monroe. And I have a suspicion there are others as well. Well, that's the Catholic way with women. Idolize the wife at home, make it with everything in a skirt, then ask for forgiveness in confessional, all clean and ready to start again. Sometimes I wish I could get away from all of this, this circus. That's what it is, you know. It's a huge, confusing circus. Total strangers lavish all this attention on me. <coughs> and I have the faintest clue what they want. Faint is like, wait, it's easy to gang, and a lot of work to lose. The next thing you know, you're like the Mona Lisa, famous for being famous. The line at the Louvre never ends. It's not as best thing. Still, they're fascinated by it. It's that supercilious grin. They're all wondering what is she's smiling about the mystery of it that's what keeps them coming back for more jackie mystery thanks for a wonderful time truman my pleasure dear see you in dc those kennedy men are like dogs they have to stop and pee at every fire hydrant <laughs> This is Howard K. Smith, coming to you live from Chicago, where for the first time in our nation's history, the two presidential candidates for the United States will meet in a televised debate. To my right, Senator D John Fitzgerald Kennedy, Democratic nominee. To my left, Vice President Richard Milhouse Nixon, Republican <laughs> nominee. Tonight's questions will be asked by Sander Van Oker. Mr. Van Oker? Senator Kennedy, the threat of communism is of the utmost importance to every American citizen. If elected, what will you do to meet this challenge? Let me just say this about that. I'm young. And I'm handsome. Notice how my dark suit sets off my boyish good looks. If uh, you look more closely into your television, you will see a lusty glint in my eye. My chin is tilted upward in a gesture of optimism. Furthermore, I propose that my administration be a virile and a vigorous one. Mr. Nixon, a rebuttal? Well, first off, I'd like to say that I look like an escaped convict. <laughs> if you look closely, you'll say that I'm sweating, sweating on my upper lip. Did I shave today? You be the judge. As you can see, I'm wearing a suit that makes me blend in with the background. It's giving me a pale and pallid look. I'm all washed out. Mr. Nixon, the next question is for you. If elected, how do you propose to keep the economy strong as we head into the new decade? <laughs> Oh, I'm very glad you asked me that question. I'd like to report to all Americans that I'm sweating even more profusely than I was just a few seconds ago. <laughs> sweating all over, looking like this, the average voter wouldn't even let me in their front door, let alone let me president. Standing next to the younger senator, I look like somebody's weird uncle. Mr. Kennedy, are we bubble? Yes. My hair is thick. Wouldn't you, the American female voter, love to run your hands through it? Furthermore, I propose we go to the moon. It will be a full moon, a romantic moon. Uh, we shall go to the full moon together. You, the voter, and me, the handsome, sexy, photogenic candidate. 
we shall be eternally young. Furthermore, I would like to conclude, gentlemen, by adding, don't forget about my lovely wife, Jackie. Together, we shall fulfill all of America's sexual fantasies. Oh, Mr. Nixon. Oh, standing next to this guy, it doesn't matter what I say. I put my mouth words come out, but you hear what I say? No. This man wants to take you on a big, sexy trip to the moon. <laughs> I'm just a simple Quaker. I want to go bowling with Ike. I want to make this perfectly clear. If you don't like me, President, there's no telling what I'll do. Now, I don't like you, and you don't like me, and I don't like myself. So let's just leave it at that. Oh. <laughs> well, good job. I think that just about does it. Uh, I predict that uh, television will revolutionize the way we elect our presidents. Well, I find it a bit depressing. If this trend continues, I foresee a day when we have an actor as president. Never happen. You must have more faith in the intelligence of the American voter <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> now that Jack is going to be president, I'm going to need a whole new wardrobe. And there's only one man I can trust. Oleg! Oleg Cassini! Jackie! 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 Oleg! 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 Oh. I am counting on you to make me a special line of clothes that is mine. Yes, yes, of course, I see it now, a rare opportunity. A first lady with the chance to make a huge impact on the world of fashion. <laughs> we are so ready. Then the Eisenhower, a lamp, best woman. <laughs> Everybody's mama, Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> Two words, Jackie, wow, wow. <laughs> but now, now, Jacqueline Kennedy, you and Jack are the most handsome and powerful couple in all the world. Justin Seed and Cleopatra and Napoleon and Josephine as the world seen the likes of you. <laughs> Go on, create Alex. Oh, uh, look, Jackie. We'll create a look, Jackie, that will be remembered for years. A look, Jackie, that will be copied, photographed, and memorialized in history books. And we call this the look, Jackie. The Jackie look. <laughs> oh. Go with it. <laughs> Let your inspiration flow. Uh -huh. I think to myself, Alex, you are designing for a star. Uh, think of what you have to do with the Prime Minister of India. Eh? You like? Uh, it's garbage. But what would she wear to a state dinner? Eh? Oh, ah, not this schmata if my life depended on it. But what would she wear to the inauguration itself? Eh? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, that to Taiwan with it. We must go out. We must be bored. We must make it statement. Statement? Mm. That's it. I want every dress to be an only cup. I don't want a bunch of fat little women running around in my dress. You have a new opportunity for an American press, That's it. You trust me as if Jack were going to be president of France. Because the White House is going to be the internet intellectual and social capital of the world. Ah, uh, this is America on the edge of your new frontier. And it's not what you do, but how you look that counts. I knew you'd understand. <laughs> to the inauguration, you will wear this simple clothes coat. Uh, yeah, poo poo. All the other women will be there in first and dowdy fire heads. This code will emphasize your youth and the president's too. It will set the tone to the entire administration. Ah! And finally, every queen must wear a crown. And this will be yours. <laughs> Of Americans. Ask not 
what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Yeah, you were wonderful. And uh, now, Mrs. Kennedy, the White House waits you. seems to have fallen into some disrepair. Disrepair? Why, it's the worst place on earth, Jack. I hate it. I can't bear the thought of living here. Look at those drapes. Who must have gotten them during a January clearance? Uh, well, I have to go lead the nation into a new frontier. Uh, why don't you make the redecoration of the White House your pet project? Restoration? I hate that word, redecorate. Whatever. Just don't paint the outside. Well, <laughs> oh, this place is a mess. The plaster is all falling down. There aren't even any bookshelves. Didn't Eisenhower read? Well, nothing to do but roll up your sleeves and get to work. Collingwood from CBS News. All right, and we're taping. Miss Kennedy, thank you for allowing us into your home. We're now in the state dining room. This room symbolizes your new duties as an official hostess. Yes, the knives and forks and spoons are all gold or vermeil, and the Eisenhower china is gold also. Miss Kennedy, I know that after dinner in the state dining room, it's customary to withdraw to the red room, may we? Oh, yes, it's right over here. It's one of the rooms we use the most. Everything in this room is empire, yes. because the style of the room is empire. It's dictated by the mantelpiece, which is empire. It's one of two mantelpieces from 1817, the year the White House was burned to the ground by the British. An impulse, I must say, I understand. Well, you have a wonderful big window here at the end. Oh, yes, the view here is very pretty. And the woodwork here is magnificent. Yes, it's all hand carved. It's one of the finest examples of American craftsmanship I've ever seen. I recently added my own carving over here. Oh? Yes, these paw marks are actually made by my own fingernails. <laughs> I often come to this window and stare out at the early American wrought iron fence that heightens the feeling of imprisonment. <laughs> and I dig my nails into the woodwork. Please leave now. Uh, Miss Kennedy, let's go see the private living quarters. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, no. please. If you don't no. mind, which, which... No. No. Come along, Jackie. We have a photo Mr. session. Mr. President. Smile. Uh, Mr. President, if you don't mind. My pleasure. Bye. Miss Kennedy, I've always been a big fan of the Marx Brothers. They are funny. Bye. Yeah. Oh, Bobby, come get the picture. Ah, uh, Jackie. Oh, Miss Kennedy, come get the picture. Oh, Bobby, a child. <laughs> Exhaustion. How I envy you. Sailing the 
Greek islands on a luxury yacht. Oh, Jackie, I just had a wonderful idea. Why don't you fly over and join us on the cruise? Ari's going to be solid and I to run the ship. Oh, you'll simply love Ari. Jack Kennedy may rule the country, but Ari rules the world. <laughs> no, really, you simply must join us. Well, that sounds fabulous. I'll have to ask Jack first. Oh, yes, darling, you do that. But first, I have to go. It's time for my champagne brunch on the floor deck, all right? That's all. Jackie. We're a little concerned about your plans to cruise on the Onassis yacht. Aristotle Onassis is not only a foreigner, he's a known womanizer. This is the worst possible combination from the view of the average American. There's a lot the average American doesn't know, right, Jack? Maybe if they knew the truth about their own president, they would cease to be average American. She's got us there, Bobby. Uh, I think the trip might do her some good. Huh. I'm glad you see it that way, because I am going to Greece. I am going to cruise on the Onassis yacht, and I don't care what the average American thinks. She is an extraordinary woman. Lee, I'm here. Oh, Jackie! <laughs> Look at this ship. Isn't it wonderful? Couldn't you just stay here? <laughs> Mrs. Kennedy, welcome to the Athena. Thank you for having me along. The pleasure is ours. <laughs> I inform the captain to take the ship wherever you want. Here are the captain, Mrs. Kennedy. Well, I want to see all of the Greek islands. And you shall. But first, let me show you around my little pleasure cruise. The Christina is the largest private yacht in the entire world. 325 feet long. The bar stools are upholstered from the scrotum of whales. The bar handles are whale ivory. All of the bathroom fixtures are gold plated. There are more telephones on this ship than the entire world has. Ah. Captain, take us to the island of Sappho. I want Mrs. Kennedy to see the sunset there. To see the sunset at Sappho. Tonight, we play music and dance. All your trouble will disappear. It is the Greek way. Enjoy, relax, whatever you want. I make sure you get them. Oh, Jackie, have some fun. Discuss it. Just come home. All right, Jack. Be back as soon as I can. <laughs> I am afraid I have to go back to Washington. It seems that the First Lady isn't quite as free as the rest of the citizens of her country. I want to thank you for having me on this cruise. I wish my Greek idol would never end. It will never end, Mrs. Kennedy. Once you're intoxicated by the magic wines of these islands, it will never vanquish your memory. Oh, a souvenir. <laughs> That's how reassuring. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Kennedy. Oh, call me Jack. <laughs> Jackie! <laughs> Captain, take us to Lesbos! Ah, look who's back. Yes, look who's back. You caused quite a stir over there. The whole country is going crazy over you. They can't get enough of their first lady. Don't remind me. Look, look at this. Life magazine. A picture of 50 women dressed to look just like you. Fantastic. 
Sometimes it gets tacky. Don't these people have lives of their own? Why do they have to live ours? Everywhere I go, they stare at me like mesmerized cattle. It gives me the creeps. Are you kidding? You are the most popular person in this administration. Without you, we'd be facing certain feet next year. Oh. I'm serious. The whole country is in love with you. Of course, uh, I consider myself first in line. I might bring you to take a number, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, uh, we are planning a trip to Dallas later in the month. There's some fighting amongst the Democrats. I promised Lyndon we'd go. Dallas. I know you hate this kind of thing, but you couldn't be of great use to me down there. Can I count on you to come along? You all right? I'll take every minute of it. If you really need me, I'll campaign with you wherever you want. Fantastic. You'll show those Texas broads a thing or two about fashion. It really is great to have you back, Jack. The White House is a very dreary place without you. Jackie, I know I haven't been the best husband lately, and uh, I realize it must be hard to be married to a man with so little spare time. And I've done some things I'm not proud of. You are what you are, Jack. I knew that when I met you. I'll tell you what. When we get back from Texas, we'll spend some time together. Just you and me. Just you and me. No photographers. And no photographers. <laughs> no Bobby. No Bobby. No Salinger. No Teddy. <laughs> no Ethel. No Eunice. Joe or Rose. No Peter, brother in Lawson. <laughs> Beautiful day, Lillian. Sunshine. Good day, but to see the president. <laughs> yes, Mr. Zapruder. I hope you brought your camera. Oh, I forgot it. Abraham Zapruder. How many times do you get a chance to take colored movies of the president and you leave your camera at home? You're a good secretary, Lillian. You keep your boss on his toes. But today, I bun up on you. Ta-da! I was only kidding you. <laughs> Jackie! Yes, sir? Uh, you almost finished in there. Uh, Pierre called and said we are running ten minutes late for breakfast. He is having a fit. Are you almost ready? How do I look? My God, you are, you are lovely. You are, you are far and away the most beautiful woman in Texas. I should just stay in the hotel and let you go. What's on the schedule today? Where are we going to watch it from? Uh, after a breakfast speech here in Fort Worth, we fly to Dallas for a motorcade. From there, we uh, go to Austin for a dinner. Well, I think the best place would be that grassy knoll over Neely Plaza. It would be less crowded. I think I would get a very clear picture. So grab your purse, lady, and I thought we should go. Couldn't we at least have a taco? The sun down here is so hot, and the wind just ruins my hair. It's hot today. Mm -hmm. I hope we find a spot in the shade. No, the top will be down. I want people to see us. That's what we're here for. So come on already, Lillian. We'll take an early lunch and get ready for the president. Are you uh, ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, then come on. I thought we should go see the president and Jackie. It's time for the good people of Texas to see their president <laughs> and first lady. <laughs>
mighty cause, who at best, if he wins, knows the thrills of high achievement, and if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. just as much a part of life as anything else. Little things seem so huge to me now. Small moments. Sunday morning, reading the newspaper, having breakfast together. The children playing. Nothing important being discussed. Just the feeling that you're with the person you love. The sense that everything is Sometimes I wake in the morning, eager to tell him something. But he's not there. Jack used to tell me when he was a boy, sick so much of the time, that he would lie in bed, reading the Knights of the Round Table. And that's how I picture him sometimes, a little boy, immersed in King Arthur, innocently building the foundations of his destiny. So now he is a legend. He belongs to history. He belongs to the world. But I knew a man. I knew a husband, and I knew a father. And that belongs to me. Again. We were hoping you would remain forever in mourning. You're the national widow. If you take off the black dress, it would be the end of Camelot. Camelot! Camelot! So stay like this. Whatever you do, don't tarnish the memory of JFK. You can take off the black veil from time to time. Sure, like when you eat or when you talk on the phone. So, Jackie, let's review. Stay a widow forever. Give Camelot a lot. Be stoic like you were at the funeral. And most important of all, let yourself be photographed! <laughs> Oh, Delilah! What have you got for me this time? Pictures of Jackie! Pictures of Jackie? Yeah. Let this on the cover of next month's issue. Grace stricken Jackie walks beach alone. How are sales doing? Very not, boss. The public can't get enough of Jackie. They're screaming for more. Oh! It's a gold mine, Delilah. You both, I love you. Don't give me more photos of Jackie. Yeah, I don't care what yeah. you gotta do. Give me more pictures. Yeah. <laughs> oh, more Jackie! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, more Jackie! Oh, more Jackie! Oh, more Jackie! Yeah! Wow! Oh, Jackie! Oh, oh, Mrs. Kennedy, this is no way for you to live. You are a queen. Yet your people treat you like some kind of amusement park. It isn't right. Oh, Mr. Onassis. Oh, please call me Ari. Oh, Ari, thank you. But you're right. I can't stand it anymore. I have no privacy. People are becoming obsessed with me. Mrs. Kennedy. I know I'm not the most handsome man in the world. Not by a long shot. <laughs> yes. Jack used to say you looked like a toad in a baggy suit. Of course I do. I think you look more like a troll. Or maybe a cross between a hunchback and a troll. Jackie, I'm trying to say something here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I want you to marry me. Of course you do. I want to take you to, I want to take you to Scorpios. There you will have the life you've already dreamed of. An island of privacy. Your children may play in the sunshine. Now Papa Razzi the father them. An entire airline at your disposal. Music, dancing. Sounds nice, eh? Yes. 
It's time to shed your widow weeds and have some fun. I accept. Oh! Oh!
Armies of lawyers stand on the brink of war. Evil war is at hand. We see a battlefield littered with the free cases of the vanquished. Treachery! Oh, wicked treachery! She's dead. Caught in rings of nothing but money. If I never see this woman again as long as I live, it will be too soon. I wish her only peace. The future and revolution stands before you now. Who will verify the path ahead for Jackie? Oh, yeah. Murdoch. It is Murdoch, god of the tabloid, share of the future. We stand on the precipice of a reign of tabloid journalism that will penetrate once respected newsrooms like a foul gas. <laughs> I come to proclaim the fate of the one named Jackie. Big it! You shall be photographed and written about ceaselessly. Every person whom you've had the slightest contact with will my people. JFK is alive! Jackie keeps vegetable eggs fresh and germ free bubble on Martha's vineyard. Your hairdresser, your grocer, even the guy that gave you directions to the ladies' room at the Lincoln Center, all will pin definitive, tell on intimate portraits. Even playwrights, the loneliest slaves of the, of the entertainment industry, they too will write about you. Jackie buys toothpaste, aspirin, and mouthwash with New York drugstore. History, interviews, intimate details. Read all about it! Read it! Buy it! Read all about it! See it! Own it! Read all about it! Badge with me, Jackie. Let your every word into the pantheon. Sit on the couch opposite Barbara Wawa and tell us your every thought. No! You dare refuse a god? Cooperate, and the world will finally see the real Jackie. Don't squander this chance for silence. In a world full of noise, Silence has surprising power. <clears throat> you have one. I grant you one request. I'd like to go back to New York now. But before I go, can you offer me any comfort? Look into the magic glass. Block out the deafening folly. I have good news for you. You will bargain in good faith with your destiny, and you will persevere. Your children will flourish. And henceforth, when the name Jackie is spoken, the words dignity and grace will follow close behind like two beautiful swans. And simply put, dear woman, that is your gift to this world. One of my very favorite things to do is to sit on my balcony and look through this telescope at the people walking in Central Park. I love to make up stories about them. Imagine their lives, what they talk about. Maybe I have you in my sight right now. Maybe I'm making up a story about you. And maybe, most probably, that story has nothing to do with who you really are. Not very comfortable, is it, being watched in that way? I came through some pretty difficult times and kept my sanity. That's no small accomplishment. May all of you be as fortunate, because it's the difficult times that we all have in common. Now, you made me a promise, remember? I kept my part of the bargain. Now all of you, please, go home. Get on with your own lives. <laughs> you know, my father once told me, keep them guessing, Jackie. They may not understand you. They may not like you. But at least they'll never forget you. Mm -hmm. 
I guess he was right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming. Think back on all the tales that you remember.